All right, so in this system of equations, I have x squared minus y squared is equal to 28, and x times y equals 48. So I'm given two equations. Let's just say that this is equation 1, and this is equation 2. So what I want to do is find the value of x plus y. So what is the value of x plus y? And finding this is very simple when we find the value of x and the value of y. So to start, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to use my second equation here. So equation 2 is x times y equals 48. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve for one variable in relation to the other. So it doesn't matter which one, but for this case, I'm going to solve for y. And to solve for y, I have to isolate it, meaning I have to get rid of this x by dividing both sides by x. So I get y is equal to 48 over x. Now, using this equation, I can plug this back in to equation 1. So equation 1 is x squared minus y squared is equal to 28. Now, here we got y is equal to 48 over x. So if I plug this in for y, I get x squared minus 48 over x squared is equal to 28. Now I can substitute the 2. So I get x squared minus 48 squared over x squared is equal to 28. Now, I'm going to multiply both sides by x squared. So now, for my left-hand side, I have to distribute the x squared. x squared times x squared is x squared squared, or x squared to the power of 2. Now, I have this minus 48 squared over x squared times x squared. These two x squared cancel out, so I just get 48 squared. And now this is equal to 28x squared. Now I'm going to subtract 28x squared on both sides. So I get x squared to the power of 2 minus 28x squared minus 48 squared is equal to 0. Now I'm going to set u equal to x squared. So I get u squared minus 28u minus 48 squared is equal to 0. And now I can solve this by completing the square. So I'm going to add 48 squared back. And Now I get u squared minus 28u is equal to 48 squared. Now I'm going to add this, so negative 28, or we can say just positive 28. I'm going to add this divided by 2 squared on both sides. And if you, don't, if you guys don't know what completing the square is, you have to go watch a video on it. So I add this on both sides. I 28 over 2 squared on both sides. And 28 over 2 is 14, so I get u squared minus 28u plus 14 squared, which is equal to 48 squared plus, again, 14 squared. And now the reason I did this, the reason I used completing the square, was because now I can factor this out. This turns into u minus 14 squared which is equal to 48 squared, I'm gonna rewrite as 50 minus two squared, and 14 squared, I'm gonna rewrite as 10 plus four squared. Now from here, u minus 14 squared is equal to 2500 minus 200 
plus 4 plus 100 plus 80 plus 16. And now if we add these up, we get u minus 14 squared is equal to twenty five hundred and if we take the square root on both sides we get u minus fourteen is equal to positive or negative fifty so we get two equations now we get u minus fourteen is equal to positive fifty and u minus fourteen is equal to negative fifty so u minus fourteen is equal to positive fifty I get u is equal to sixty four and u minus fourteen is equal to negative fifty I get u is equal to negative thirty six Now, remember how we let u equal x squared. So this means that x squared is equal to 64 and x squared is equal to negative 36. Well, we can't have a number squared equal to a negative number. So this is wrong, meaning that x squared equals 64 is my only proper equation, and if I take the square root on both sides, I get x is equal to positive or negative 8. So these are my two solutions to this problem. And I know that I said this wasn't work, but there actually is a way we can use this to find solutions, not real solutions, but imaginary solutions. So to do that, what I want to do is x squared is equal to negative 36. If I take the square root on both sides, I get x is equal to square root of negative 36. And the square root of negative 36 is the same thing as the square root of 36 times the square root of negative 1. Now the square root of negative 1 is the same thing as i, so I get x is equal to the square root of 36 i. And the square root of 36 is the same thing as positive or negative 6. So I get x is equal to positive or negative 6i. So these are another two solutions. And these aren't real solutions, but these are imaginary solutions, which still count as solutions to this problem. So my four solutions are x equals 8, x equals negative 8, x is equal to 6i, and x is equal to negative 6i. All right, so in this problem, I have 2 to the power of 3 to the power of 4 to the power of x is equal to 512. So to solve this, I'm going to first start by rewriting 512. <clears throat> so 512, this is the same thing as 16 times 32. And now I can write this as 2 to the power of 3 to the power of 4 to the power of x is equal to 16 times 32. Now 16 is equal to 2 to the power of 4 and 32 is equal to 2 to the power of 5. So this is why we wrote 512 as 16 times 32, because now two to the, I have 2 to the power of 4 times 2 to the power of 5. And notice how we have another base of 2 over here, 2 to the power of 3 to the power of 4 to the power of x. So now I can rewrite this as 2 to the power of 3 to the power of 4 to the power of x is equal to 2 to the power of 4 times 2 to the power of 5. Now all my terms are bases of 2. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m times a to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m plus n. So right here, we have 2 to the power of 3 to the power of 4 to the power of x is equal to 2 to the power of 4 
times 2 to the power of 5, which is the same thing as 2 to the power of 4 plus 5. And 4 plus 5, that's equal to 9. So 2 to the power of 3 to the power of 4 to the power of x is equal to 2 to the power of 9. And also, instead of doing all that, remember over here how we had at the start 2 to the power of 3 to the power of 4 to the power of x equals 512. 512 is equal to, well, we know that 2 to the power of 5 is 32. So 512 is 2 to the power of 5 times 2 to the power of 4, which is 2 to the power of 9. So we could just set at the start that 512 is equal to 2 to the power of 9, but, we, but some people don't know that 2 to the power of 9 is equal to 512, so that's why we have to do all of that. So now going back here, we have 2 to the power of 3 to the power of 4 to the power of x is equal to 2 to the power of 9. And now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m is equal to a to the power of n, this means that m is equal to n. So in this case, we can say that m is equal to 3 to the power of 4 to the power of x, and n is equal to 9. So because these two bases are the same, this means that 3 to the power of 4 to the power of x is equal to 9. Now, 9 is the same thing as 3 squared. So now I have 3 to the power of 4 to the power of x is equal to 3 squared. And now again, I can use this property because both my bases are the same. So this means that 4 to the power of x is equal to 2. And now, 4 is the same thing as 2 squared. So I get 2 squared to the power of x is equal to 2. And if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m times n. So 2 to the power of 2 to the power of x is going to equal 2 to the power of 2 times x, which is 2 to the power of 2x. This is equal to 2. Now, I'm going to use this property again. 2 is the same thing as 2 to the power of 1. So then, because these two bases are the same, I get 2x is equal to 1. And now, if I divide both sides by 2, these two cancel out, and I get x is equal to 1 half. So now, to check, my original equation was 2 to the power of 3 to the power of 4 to the power of x is equal to 512. So I have 2 to the power of 3 to the power of 4 to the power of x is equal to 512. And we said that x is equal to 1 half. So I have 2 to the power of 3 to the power of 4 to the power of 1 half is equal to 512. Now, I'm going to work my day way down from the top. So I first start with 4 to the power of 1 half. Now, 4 to the power of 1 half is the same thing as the square root of 4. And the square root of 4 is equal to 2, meaning I have 2 to the power of 3 to the power of 2 is equal to 512. Now from here, 3 to the power of 2 is equal to 9. So I have 2 to the power of 9 is equal to 512. And finally, 2 to the power of 9, that's equal to 512, as we already said at the start. So we get 512 is equal to 512.